I do not consider myself to be a handyman by any means, but as a man, occasionally I do come in handy. I have pre-assembled this. I'm sorry. Uh, basically, it's just four pieces of wood and these corners that really do come in handy because they have these holes in them and uh, you can hang them on the wall from there and screws to bind it all together. I didn't use any screws to bind the wood pieces of wood together, just the corners, they're doing the job just fine. Hey, hey everyone, this is Aris and welcome to the channel. Again, this is a bit of a different episode. Today I am discussing room acoustics and how they affect your recordings. If you're a voice actor, if you are a YouTuber, a podcaster, an interviewer, or whatnot, it does affect the way you sound. Microphones are important, but they're not the most important thing when it comes to audio. Your acoustics and the room that you're recording in is even more important than your microphone. So let's dive right into the iPad where I will be using an app called Procreate. This is the app that I'm using to create all my visuals, all my letters, my lettering for my videos, all my titles. Um, and I will be using this as a sort of a chalkboard uh, to discuss and explain what I want to tell you. So let's pretend for a second that I can draw because I did study architecture. Did you know that? So let's pretend that I can draw and I can draw a room in a top down view. So this is from the top. You are watching from the ceiling and you're looking at the floor. This is you. This is your nose and these are your ears and these are your arms and these are your feet. You're standing and no this here is the microphone. We do tutorials now. You can be on a desk, you can be standing up, you can be in a booth or in your room, your bedroom or whatever. Man. But the principle is the same. You are in a room with four walls. What happens is your voice is leaving your mouth and it's not going in a straight line towards the microphone. It never is. If our voices went from here to there, then our life would be so much easier, but they don't. They have a big spill towards the side, plus our head is acting as an amplifier, as a reverberation room, as a um, booming device for our voice. So it's actually emanating sound from the back as well. All this sound that is leaving our head and our mouth is bouncing off the walls, off the naked surfaces of the walls, and is going places. So this is bouncing that way, and it's leaving that way, and that way, and that way, etc., etc. And our voice is leaving straight up, of course, and then bouncing on the wall behind and on the wall behind, etc., and keeps going back and forth. Plus, it goes that way. And these kind of parallel walls are the worst because what's happening is all these sounds that are bouncing all the way into the room, they are entering the microphone yet again. There is absolutely very little that you can do to stop these with contraptions like filters that go around the microphone, don't want to name companies, if there is nothing else in the room. 
So the effect of this sound that's coming back into the microphone, and that's not the first sound that's exiting your mouth, but the secondary reflections, we call them, that are bouncing off the walls, is delay, also called echo, or reverb. And delay or echo are the same thing, and they are the repetition of the original sound. So if I go like, then in an acoustically treated room, this has no repetitions. But if my walls are naked, then this sounds like And of course, if the room is small, it sounds like the repetitions come a lot sooner. The smaller the room, the shorter the time, the interval between the repetitions. Um, and uh, reverb is the elongation of certain attributes of the sound uh, in a sort of tail. So while delay looks in, in a waveform like this, reverb actually looks like this. So delay is reverb sounds like uh, if I go with a sh sound, then in a treated room, it should sound like sh, but in an untreated room, it should sound like sh. And that's also very annoying. The problem with these is that you can listen to them back in the recording and audio engineers in my profession hate them because they want a clean sound and they cannot clean the sound if it has reverberations or, um, or delay in them. Um, and when I watch YouTube, a lot of very famous YouTubers don't actually get this and they don't use acoustic treatment. So the sound is very much off to my ears. Uh, it's very important if you're a podcaster too, because people are just using their ears and there is no visuals. So sound is all you've got basically. And what can you do to eliminate these reflections, these reverberations? Let's go back here and erase a lot of this. Okay, here we are. Let's raise these two. This is you, this is the microphone. And what we do is we insert certain panels. Usually the exoskeleton is wooden. And they have some sort of fabric around them. And the inside is some sort of uh, sound absorbing material. Um, I personally use rock wool because I believe it is uh, a lot more eco-friendly than the others. And in case of a fire, uh, in case of um, degradation that's, ha that's occurring several years after, uh, some of the other materials uh, do degrade, especially the lower quality ones. Some of the higher quality ones are fantastic and fine. Uh, I don't want to name companies because I don't want the other companies to be dissatisfied with this mention. But um, rock wool is what I use and I love it. It's very eco-friendly. It's basically wool from sheep, little, little hair that's bound together one with the other. And they come in panels, which we will discuss shortly. And basically, so yeah, what happens is you have these panels of wood, made of wood, and inside you have the insulation, the sound absorbing material. And all around you've got this fabric that's just binding it all together and makes it look professional, neat, cool, awesome, and amazing. So what do these do? The sound is exiting your mouth, just as before, but now it doesn't get reflected back. So erasing this arrow, it's basically getting trapped in the insulation and it cannot leave. So the fabric and the insulation inside, the sound absorbing material is killing the sound reflections and it's not allowing the sound to, be, to bounce back off the walls. And this is happening on the majority of the surface of your walls. You don't want to cover everything, but you do want to cover a lot of it. So um, around, depending on your needs and on the rest of the space and the geometry of the space, uh, 40 to 80% needs to be covered. Personally, I like a room that is more acoustically dead than uh, naked than reflective, uh, especially because of my voice voice acting uh, career. And I have approximately 70 to 80% of my walls covered in these. And that includes the ceiling and the floor. I'm not placing panels on the floor, but some kind of carpet or, you know, uh, furniture that's 
um, changing the geometry. Basically, you do not want parallel surfaces. So if you have a table here and there and um, something on the table, maybe some pillows on the floor laying around, everything, all of this helps, everything helps. So the sound is getting absorbed into the material that you've put in the panels and uh, the bass frequencies are even more persistent than the higher frequencies. So the human voice is not actually as bassy as a bass or a contrabass or a cello uh, or drums even. I'm a bass. Uh, but still, some of us like to insert some bass traps in the corners because bass frequencies tend to linger, they love to linger in the corners. Bass traps are of a different shape Usually, they come in either a quarter circle, a quarter cylinder circle in top-down view. So if you saw that in a 3D sketch, because I've finished architecture, did, did I mention that? That would be something that would look like this. This is the, the walls here. And this is a base trap. And they're filled with insulation. And uh, if you are doing it yourself, obviously it's not as easy to make them uh, like a quarter of a cylinder. It's easier to make them uh, a straight corner, like a straight triangle. So this would be your wall. And just this would be your sound trap, base trap. Looks like a little house. So bass traps do the same thing, but they absorb the bass frequencies more, even even more than the rest of the panels. The panels are enough for the higher frequencies, but the bass traps help with the bass ones. And that's it. That is it, really. So let's go check out what happens with the dimensions and the construction. So these panels come in different sizes. Mine are in centimeters because I use a metric system. I was born and raised in Europe. Uh, that's 120, that's 1 meter 20 centimeters long and 60. That's 60 centimeters wide. And they have a thickness of 5 centimeters. And let me very quickly translate that in inches. Some of you might be interested in inches. Two These are my inches. dimensions and uh, very, very usual ones. Translate two at that. inches. So basically what you do is you take these and then you apply the exoskeleton. You bind an, some, some sort of exoskeleton for these. I keep calling it exoskeleton because I studied architecture in Greek. It's a frame. And I've watched more sci-fi movies than discussed architecture frame. in English. So you have the wood externally, you have your insulation internally, and then on top of that, you have some kind of fabric that goes around and binds it all together. Obviously you cannot see the insulation anymore, but the fabric just goes around like this and on top. That's basically it. Why don't we go apply some panels to these walls and see what happens to the sound. Obviously I've applied them already for this tutorial, so um, the sound right now is pretty good, but uh, I've got some before and after, and we can test it out. So this is what the place sounds like when I bypass all the plugins and uh, no panels on the walls, so let's take a listen to it. Test, one, two, three, test, test. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like with the panels on. Panels on. So, it might not seem like it, but it does sound like a big difference, doesn't it? I mean, listen to this. Testing, test, 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 testing. One, two, three. Wow, right? Everything is so much clearer. It isn't the microphone placement. It isn't the microphone itself. It isn't my distance from the microphone because I made sure everything was the same as before. It's just the panels. 
Ideally, what you want to do is take the sound that's coming out of your mouth and it's bouncing off the walls and coming back into the microphone. That's what we call echo. You want to eliminate that. And you are doing that by using sound absorption. Now, this is what we call treating a room acoustically. And this is sound absorption, and it's not the same as sound proofing. Sound treatment or echo treatment or absorption is basically just that. It takes a sound that's coming out of my voice and it sucks it in these panels. And these panels do not allow the sound to bounce back into the wall over there and then back into this wall. And the microphone is not, whoa. Dun, dun, dun. Voice artistry, big mistake. Uh, so the sound, the microphone is not picking up the sound that's bouncing off the walls. You can do that with diffusers as well, but you do need absorption as well as diffusion for it to be realistic, you know, pleasant to the ear. You cannot do that only with um, diffusers. And you can also not achieve a pleasant sound if you cover all the walls and all the ceilings and the floors with sound absorbing materials. So what I've done here is I've left the ceiling and parts of the floor uncovered and the door is uncovered over there. And there's a wardrobe and a balcony door and a window. So lots of glass surfaces and the ceiling are uncovered and naked. So that works very well to keep the sound alive and not acoustically dead, as we call it in the profession. So what do you think? How does it sound to you? Is that more pleasant to the ear? I'm going to be using fewer plugins and uh, I'm going to be relying less on them now that I've done this. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time and all my videos were done without these. So you can work without these, but you're better off with these. <laughs> so wrapping up, if you're a voice actor, Paramount. This is something that you have to have somewhere. If you are a gamer and you're streaming, I believe this might be useful, very useful. If you are a YouTuber, I also think it's very important to take care of this because audio is important for YouTube always, but your microphone isn't everything. You need to have some sort of acoustic treatment on the walls of the room where you are recording your videos. Otherwise, you know, echo, dude. If you're doing podcasts, if you're doing interviews online, if you are presenting things, reviews, unboxing videos, whatever, I believe it's very important. I've always cringed at bad audio, especially bad treatment or no treatment at all when watching YouTube. So, you know, maybe it's my profession, maybe it's my affinity to sound, <laughs> and sound engineers remember so maybe that's just me but maybe that's you too maybe you can start recognizing it now that you've heard it in this video maybe you can start recognizing it in other videos as well anyway guys i hope you found this video helpful please consider subscribing to the channel there's a lot more where this came from and uh, as always be kind and take care